Well, first off, uh, a sweep and uh, something I'm sure everybody feels good. But what does it feel like in the room? And, and first initial thoughts on after after two wins. Like initial thoughts, are you happy with the four points in two games? Um, there's certain aspects of our game that we definitely want to clean up, and I think that's what we're going to be worrying about moving forward. Don't have much time before our next one, but at the same time, uh, we have enough to tweak some things. It wasn't drastic, um, and along with that, there's a lot of positives. Like our power play continues to figure out ways to manipulate the other team's box. Um, even when other teams know what we're doing, we're still able to figure out other ways. Um, I thought we had contributions up and down the lineup with goal scores and with defensive play. So there's a lot of things that kind of run through your head after these four games, but you're mostly happy with the four points in two, in two games there. I know it's the nature of the league, but it seems like just with COVID and everything, there's more rotations in the lineup, more guys are in, out. This week you lose some guys, but you get Jad back, you get Ferk back. I mean, what's it like kind of seeing those guys come back and have success? You know, even a guy like Akil, he's been out for quite a bit, and him be able to come back really helps our lineup. Like you look at the face-offs he won at the end of the game, that might not be something we really have in our lineup, a right-hand shot like that. And he does it. You've got Jad who's able to play all types of the all points of the game. Mo, same thing. Mo came back, did a wonderful job for us. Um, I think last year, because it was such a controlled environment, young guys like Akil weren't quite ready for, didn't get to experience, I should say, um, the typical ebbs and flows of American Hockey League season. Because though this season might be a bit, uh, a bit more exaggerated in terms of the um, transactions. Most HL seasons, you're dealing with tons of it. Uh, my second year pro, I had 13 different defense partners. That's not because they wanted to play with me. <laughs> that's not what that was. I was just out of necessity. So I think that's part of it. Um, yes, like I said, it's a bit exaggerated, but we're getting used to it, and every team's dealing with it. So we can't say that we're upset about it because every team has to deal with it. Well, and the guys who are cycling in are good, or go, well, they're good players that are going up and down, so it helps either way, I guess. Exactly. Typically, like you said, if a guy's going up and down, he's one of the main contributors of our lineup. And if we, as long as we happen to get back as many as we give up, um, it usually ends up as a plus on our side. But even if not, the next man up mentality has to be important in the American Hockey League because everyone here has a job they're either fighting for on this team or in the next level. So we've got that mentality. We've got a good group of that. We've got a determined group, and I think that that's going to continue to show. For you, you've been playing a lot with Jordan Spencer throughout the course of the season, and you know I'm sure you've watched him and watched his game over the last couple months. What has it been like for you to watch how confident that he has gotten and, and where his game is at now as opposed to a couple even weeks ago? I think what Jordan's been able to do is really stabilize his five-on-five -five play without the puck. Um, with the puck, he has skills that not many players have, but he's been able to really stabilize his positioning, leaving the zone, uh, maintaining his winger in front of him. Um, I thought, like, it wasn't just him. It was a lot of players on our team, myself included. We were letting too many guys get behind us in the off, uh, leaving the offensive zone. I thought he's done a great job with that. He's also a lot more tenacious in our own zone. Just knowing when to expend energy, I think he's improving with that. I think that goes a lot to our development staff here. You know, a lot of the development staff's really working with him on those things, and that's really the only thing that the guy like Spence really probably needs, because talent-wise, offensively, with the puck, uh, so dynamic that he has things that a lot of us, doesn't matter how much we work we're not going to have so just the maturity he's getting to his game on the defensive side of the puck has been it's been fun to watch getting ready to go back on the road now for a couple you get san jose twice you get stockton again and how important is it for you guys to finally start reloading in the lineup everybody coming back in before you guys go back on the road again? i think it's going to be key i think you know when you go on the road trip it's great for what road trips really do is bring a team together off the ice uh, because you're with each other there's nowhere for you to go especially when these times we're in right now so that's one thing you want to have a lot of guys not only for the games but for offense because the more guys you have around they're going to be part of your group the more you're able to uh, get to know each other understand each other and kind of go through things together um, again on ice it's going to be important because We've got a wonderful record at home. Our record on the road is good, not great. And I think that that's one thing that can be just brought with consistency with lineup. But there's things out of our control. Uh, but at the same time, when we do have guys back, we need to control what's in front of us. When these last couple of weeks, you know, not just the rain, but so many teams having so many personnel changes with guys coming in and out of the lineup. Right now, with a couple of the veteran guys out, or just how it's been the last couple of weeks with having people out, do you feel like roles for you and for Ferk and for Tynan are elevated in the locker room? I, I think a bit. I think a bit more onus gets put on the older guys. Um, I think the important thing is you don't try to go outside yourself. Everyone's got their own scope of what leadership is to them. And the more you try to be someone you're not, it shows. So I think what ends up happening is if you have five guys that normally are 
your leaders. All of a sudden it's four. Just means that you're gonna be looked at that much more. Doesn't mean you have to do more, just means what you do is that much more important. And I think that's kind of the key, especially with a guy like Sutter. Like we're not gonna be able to replace Brett with his leadership. Um, so we just need to make sure we do it as a group and you continue to do, I think what you, what your positives are uh, as a leader and you try to, um, get using the term again, exaggerate. Well, you say what what you do matters more. You scored two goals in the last three games. I know like, that you're not you know tearing it up offensively, mm -hmm. but you know today, uh, what did you see on that shot and you know putting pucks to the net? I guess. Yeah, like uh, I feel like too often I've been too fine with my shots this year. Um, I'm not beating a goalie from the point with the puck. Um, I don't have the shot to do that. So typically I'm just shooting for areas in the net where I think guys can get sticks on it. And because there wasn't really a screen, I tried to just shoot it towards his glove side. You know, a lot of coaches have had in the past shoot it towards the traffic because worst thing that happens is it hits them and falls in front of them. So I just try to put it towards that area. Uh, I thought I did a pretty good job of taking a few steps forward after Ferky gave me the pass. Uh, I changed my angle a bit and just try to kind of put it towards the bodies in front and I uh, got a bit lucky with that.